This time around, we're going to create a button and declare the click event handler programmatically. Let's create that new button. So if you start off in your main activity design layout, grab that, grab a button widget, drag it over and place it underneath the previous button we had. We need to edit the XML file. You can see that our new button has been created down here. They both contain the same text, new button. Let's change that. In the first button, let's relabel that method one. Let's name our new button method two. And our new button needs a unique identifier. We'll call it button my first button underscore method two. And that's all you need to do in the XML file. We don't need to add this on click item. We're going to define this programmatically. So let's go into our main activity file and do this. Previously, we had our handler method waiting outside of all the other methods. So here it, here it was, send a message. But using this second way of handling a button click, we need to enter the code in the onCreate method. The first thing we're going to do, oh, and Android wants us to import this class. Let's do that quickly. There is our button class. So we're going to create a button object and label it after our button, my first button underscore method two. And we can assign that to our real button in the XML layout by find view by ID and then referencing the ID we gave it. So that's resource ID button my first button method two. Now we have a handle on our object. We need to set a click listener and define an activity to perform when a click is detected. This is going to look a little complicated. There are a few nested methods, so pay attention. What we're going to do first is use our object, my first button method two, this button object. And the button class has a member method called set on click listener. Well, we need to give it an on click listener if it's going to set one to the button. So we're going to create a new on click listener, which is part of view. And what does this on click listener do once a click is detected? Well, we pass in on click. And all we're going to do is create an intent and start the activity with that intent. This time around, I've created an explicit intent. And I've decided to do that to show you a subtle difference to the previous where we launched an explicit intent. We need to state which activity we're launching the intent from. So I've labeled it main activity dot this. Quickly compare that to our previous explicit intent. We just said this. If you don't do this, it won't work. Let's put it back in. And that's how you handle a button click programmatically. Let's run the application to verify this. Well, here are our two buttons. Let's hit method two. Great, that goes straight to the my first button activity. Let's back out of that. Let's hit method one. That also takes us to our my first button activity. Well, this does look untidy, but there is a way of neatening this up. We can ask our activity to implement an interface and uh, the interface we're going to implement is the on click listener. And when you're implementing an interface, your class has to use the methods that are part of that interface. It's like implementing an interface to uh, a door. You have to use the door handle to open the door. Otherwise, it's no use, if that makes sense. So what we'll do is the code will remain partly similar, but I've added this extra line and we can comment out the work we did previously. Ah, but how are we going to handle the click, I hear you ask? Well, we can now put, an, put our onClick method as a member method. So let's scroll down to the bottom of our class. Let's pick, uh, let's place it underneath our send message method. And now our onClick method looks a little more like our send message method. So we receive a view and we place a switch. And now we can handle many more buttons programmatically using this switch. And I think we've covered button click detection completely.
And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for listening.